Hey, what's up guys? This is Technical Tim here, and I want to thank everyone so much who's been liking all my videos and subscribing to the channel. And I really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. This is the podcast with Gugabe. Look below for timestamps um, in the comments if you don't want to listen to this. Or we, in the podcast, we go over, we recap the Nganu JDS card if you don't want to hear that and skip ahead to UFC 239 where we preview that. There's a timestamp in the box, so. Uh, in the comments, or the description box of this video, sorry. So you can always skip ahead. I'm going to talk for like five minutes, just so you know. I'm a little behind on taping. Like, I've, I'm almost finished up, but I'm a little behind because there's a lot of big favorites on this card, and most of them are, are deserved. Um, so I've kind of been looking at the Durandamine Lad card a little bit, because there's a lot of closer odd matchups in that in that week, so I, I feel like that, I kind of want to look at that before a lot of the odds get, maybe get hit, if there's any offline, so I've kind of been focused on that a little bit, but I've still been taping for 239. Um, I don't really have many plays right now, I hit Marcos early at plus 240 for arbitrage purposes, and that line is closing, so could be an opportunity, I might just roll with my Marcos play, but I'll let you know uh, by the end of the week. Um, the only other play, I got Song Yudong at like an earlier line. I think anything better than minus 200 is a fine play for him. Um, and yeah, I'm kind, I'm kind of eyeing, I, I have my eye on a few other fights. I think Melendez could maybe be a decent play as an underdog. I haven't decided yet. I, I don't think, Allen just doesn't throw enough to be that big of a favorite. Um... And then, yeah, then Askren Masvidal seems very anticipated, and I don't think I'm going to play either guy's money line, to be honest. I, I think Askren decision is something that I might look at. I don't think Masvidal as a big dog is a bad play at all, um, but I think Askren decision around even money is kind of what I'm thinking, but I haven't decided, and I still have to tape. You'll hear some of my thoughts on that fight in this uh, podcast with Gugabe, but um, I still need to finish taping for a lot of these fights, just so you know. So I'm not fully set in stone with all my plays, but essentially, um, this podcast with Gugabe is going. I'm going to do, you'll see a couple more videos throughout this week. And um, you'll have my final thoughts video where I kind of go through everything. Just me. you guys are used to that. So um, I don't have anything too big right now on any on any plays because there's a lot of just big favorites. I, like this is kind of a it's kind of a shame that a big pay per view like this is just a bunch of huge favorites. Like I wish there were some more competitive fights. Like there are some competitive fights here, but uh, um, yeah, you, you guys get what I'm saying, so, um, yeah, there will also be some changes to this channel that will take, um, that will be implemented this weekend, so, nothing big, just, like, production changes, the looks of the videos will be a little different, too, so, yeah, like, no major plays right now, but, um, I'm sure I'll have some, and keep an eye out for my, for more videos throughout the week and my final thoughts video, but enjoy the podcast, and, um, yeah, um, we talk about Askren a lot, and, and Masvidal, we kind of, like, get sidetracked and talk about that a lot. Like, Gugabe is very high on Masvidal. I'm kind of, I'm just kind of in the middle. That's all I am. And I think it's, uh, like, I get both sides. That's, that's what I'm saying. Um, I, th I don't think Askren will finish Masvidal, though. I don't. I, I think if you want to play Askren, I think his decision line might be better, unless if his money line really improves or something. So that's all I got, but thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the podcast with Gugabe, and I will be sending out more videos throughout the week. Thank you. All right, good morning, good evening, and good night to everybody. This is another episode of WMMA All Day. With um, Gugabe, I am Gugabe. Tim is somewhere in this conversation. Say hi, Tim. <laughs> hi, guys. I said to say hi, Tim. Anyway, um, hi, hi, Tim. <laughs> there we go. All right. <laughs> so uh, let's look at recapping UFC on ESPN three in the Garnu versus Los Santos. The Garnu remains as flawless a boxer as ever. Uh, yeah, that was. <laughs> He's a frightening man, though. Um... Yeah, pretty much. Like he 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 hit his win condition, which 
first round KOs for him seem to be like 80, 90% of the time. Yeah, it happens. It's just kind of depressing. He's just like, this guy is not very good. <laughs> it's just, is Nagano actually any good? Like, if you put Nagano's skill set in the average human being's body, would it even like win on the regionals? Yeah, I mean, I don't think his skills are all that good. It's obviously just the power. Um, my buddy who watches MMA and he he's like a big baseball fan. I don't know if you watch baseball. There's this guy named Aroldis Chapman who can like throw way harder than everybody else. Like he can throw like yeah, 105, yeah. which is kind of crazy. And it kind of reminds me of that. He, he just like has a power that's kind of unprecedented in a way. Um, yeah. And just like way above his peers. Yeah, I can agree with that. The Chapman's got the record, hasn't he? For like the fastest pitch. I think I saw that like a while ago. Yeah, and just like the consistency of how fast it is. It's like every now and then someone might like throw something that is semi comparable, but he just can like consistently throw like one oh three to one oh five. Yeah, which is crazy. I think his arm would have gone by now. But yeah, just yeah. I don't know. The guy that just kinda of depresses me because it's just I don't know, it's just, it's just bad. Like, I mean, he, he killed poor JDS. I like everyone likes JDS. I assume you like JDS. It's yeah, just he's kind just of depressing. killing everyone. Yeah. And, like, at least if he was killing people, like, comprehensively with skill, we'd be like, all right, that guy's doing something new. Not just this random fuckery with I am the greatest, I am the greatest hitter to ever live for no apparent reason. It's funny because his power is going to, like, pop him up there for being, like, an all time great heavyweight like if you just like look you, you know like in the conversation like if you look at the three knockouts he has in the first round it's jds kane and blades like those are all three <laughs> really good heavyweights too and over him and Alopsky. yeah yeah pretty much <laughs> it's like yeah I, I mean just like and he's not even old in his career so he's only 32 yeah, I mean, because he has to be like at least top five heavyweights of all time, doesn't he? Which I mean, depressing. Which is awful. Yeah, I don't always like talk about stuff like this, but if you really just like think about it, yeah, he probably is. And if he's not, he's very close. You know, he's like right there. Like I'd, I'd say his career achievements will be um, over overtake JDS's. I still have, I still have Kane above him because I feel like Kane was especially injured. But yeah. Because yeah, yeah. You can, you can it's be Fedor, Kane, Stipe. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's he's like already in the mix, and he is young in his career, and he's gonna like decapitate like ten more people at least, you know. <laughs> so yep. yeah, he'll be he'll be in there. All right. Speaking about some actual skilled heavyweights, let's start with Albini versus Green. Um. <laughs> I think Albini is actually better than MMA than the guy who was, like, in absolute skill sense. He, he threw some combinations, he was working the body. I don't know, I had a little bit of Albini. I, he lost, but I, think I kind of didn't regret it, because I felt like it was just a low-level heavyweight swang first. And, like, yeah, I have, I have plus 130, it's enough for me. But I enjoyed my coin flips. Yeah, it was, uh, I, it was, it seemed pretty 50-50 after watching it. Um, I kind of figured it was pretty close. Pre-tapes, I didn't really have much interest in it. I'm glad I didn't play the over because um, they ended up just coming out swinging. I thought there would maybe be more clinching, so glad I just laid off that. That was kind of why I was feeling Albini because I thought Albini would be more aggressive, which he kind of was, but like, I don't know, just random outcome, I guess. Yeah, I, um, I mean, either one could have knocked the other one out. They both dropped each other multiple times. Yeah, pretty much. Um, all right, so Whitmire versus Rebus. Rebus, Rebus. I think we both played Rebus sub here on track. Um, yeah, Rebus looked good. Um, I didn't really like a game apart from the Jiu-Jitsu, but her Jiu-Jitsu looked great. Yeah, and um, whenever I, I watched her, I watched her EBI grappling match, and it was like the only tape on her in the last few years, and it was good. Like I was like, oh, this is actual like legitimate Jiu-Jitsu. Um, I know belts don't always mean anything, but she was a black belt, and it looked like a legitimate black belt. So, yeah, she looked good. Yeah, um, I don't necessarily think she's got a huge ceiling in the division. Yeah, she always it's the deepest women's division by, what, a massive margin. <laughs> and yeah. Is this strawweight or flyweight? Strawweight. I actually don't remember. They're both on topology. 
Yeah, you might be right. I have no idea. I was just asking. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because sure, I'm sure it's fairly deep. I feel like Rebus will get fight people with enough takedown defense to stop her doing her thing. But yeah, yeah. good fight. She looked good. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Dolce. Here, here's the start of the Dolce parlays. The, the Dolce, Gordon Anders, Ramos, and uh, what was the other one? The uh, Roberts Manifield. Yeah, the Roberts parlay. Yeah, all those. Oh god, um, Doucher. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just uh, I pay them. I pay them small. I don't feel unjustified in paying him because he's a very silly person who has no striking defense. Um, yeah, Doucher is essentially Doucher is essentially Ben Askren. We learned that. <laughs> Amazing, yeah, wrestling. Yeah, Doucher is the leader of judo fighter, and Ben Askren essentially is a judoka. Um, <laughs> He is. You know, just look into your heart and see it to be true. Um, <laughs> and that was kind of a mess of a fight. The KO just kind of came out of nowhere, but Delcha just kind of laid on him for two rounds, but Delcha got hit hard in the face on the feet. Um, Dekwon seemed very happy to sit lay on his, lie on his back, so it wasn't like Delcha was showing elite top control. Cause what did Delcha for? Delcha used to throw like 10 ground and pound strikes in two rounds. I remember that. Yeah, I didn't have a play here. I, I was really surprised with how long they let him kind of sit and guard. Um, I like, I'm kind of like in between about stand ups. Like, I, I don't think, I think sometimes they're way too quick to do them. But if you're just laying in guard and just not even throwing strikes, like, I think you have to either be attempting to pass or be throwing strikes from guard, one of the two. And he was just not doing anything. So that was weird. But um, yeah, cool. he, he's going to get beat. Like, 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 I'm really mad the Ledette fight got cancelled after that because I had plus money on, on Ledette. I'm sure Doucher will be like minus 500 against like Gian Volante or something like that. Money time. Oh yeah. Um, just looking at this, yeah, according to um, fight metric, he threw 10 significant strikes in round 2. And he had like top control for essentially the entire round. That, yeah, that was weird how it wasn't stood up in my opinion. Just because it wasn't like he was doing anything. Yeah, and then they stood up Maya when he was in like a leg lace mount on on Martin later in the night. Yeah, I don't know. I'm mad judging for you. Um, <laughs> Gordon Murray. Murray, Murray actually looked pretty good there. Like I felt he was definitely the value side. Gordon can't squeak that out. Um, yeah, if he just wasn't, if he didn't like jump guillotines and and jump and focus on guard ar- like arm bars and stuff, I feel like he actually could have won because he, he it looked like he had the skills to scramble and and not accept bottom position, but he just didn't do it, you know? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, just sort of bottom man tendencies. Yeah. Um, yeah, like if I was on Gordon, I would not be feeling particularly confident or happy with that result, put it that way. Pretty um, much. And as Mariah? Um, I had to show some decent takedown defense. Like, I had a little bit of my, my highest up just because I enjoyed my medium sub plays. And, um, I don't know, my highest seems to have had the right idea. He just failed to implement it when Anders just killed him. And, I don't know. Oh, well. Happens. Yeah, pretty much. I, I thought about playing Morea as just a small, do- or just as like a small play on, on the dog line. But then I, I kind of watched more of Anders and his actual uh, wrestling defense and his like wrestling defense cardio seemed to hold up so i was like he'll i guess he'll probably win um but yeah yeah pretty much um anders gets a win um i don't think he's i don't think he's gonna go anywhere but yeah no he's, he's still eric anders yeah uh harmosh first newson it's actually H- harmosh definitely won but i thought newson made decent accounting for himself he was just like three feet shorter which kind of limited his options <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought it was a super impressive debut for like short notice and fighting a pretty good bantamweight, you know? Um, yeah, like he he, is, he seems pretty well rounded. D- didn't he have some type of like guillotine in that was pretty close? I couldn't remember. Yeah, um, in the third round. Yeah, these one in the third round. Um, yeah, he looked good. He looked good, looked tough. Um, he took yeah. some massive elbows. Yeah. Um, I, I think he's been under, I think the size might be a bit of an issue, but. Actually, how big is Harmos is Ramos for that division? He's only five nine, so it's like Harmos is massive. Um, so it's kind of big five, for one thirty five, though. Yeah, five, five nine versus five five. Fucking, that looked like a foot difference. 
<laughs> yeah. Like in the cage, that looked like a huge difference, didn't it? Oh yeah, it did. Um, I wonder if Newsom can make one twenty five, but I don't know if that division's around anymore. Um, yeah, and yeah, I think one twenty five definitely suited him better. Um, yeah. All right. Um, Paul Craig had his freedom taken. Actually, I, I man, I feel wonder, but I wasn't really feeling very inspired by him up to the um, Craig kind of falling over and getting and giving a massive ground and pound spot. Like, Minifield had landed five shots in three minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can make fun of me here, but I, I threw Menafield in a parlay with Dober. Um, but just because I felt like, I don't know, just because I, I felt like it was kind of like a, how do I want to put this? Just like a one win condition type of fight. Like, Reyes needed a KO, Craig needed a sub. But, um, yeah, no, I do feel what you're saying. I think it was kind of because Metafield was so focused on stopping the takedowns that sometimes you kind of can't get your own offense going. It kind of reminded me of like Overeem Verdum um, in Strike Force, where Overeem was like probably the better striker, but he actually was kind of get getting outlanded on because Verdum was just like falling over going for takedowns and then would like spam some strikes that I, I like, so I think it was si- yeah. uh, semi comparable, but, um, yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Um, Menafield at least stayed like composed, but yeah, yeah. It's just like, it's just a typical Paul Craig fight. I feel. Yeah. Like till Craig fell over, I, I, I didn't feel like Craig's decision was like completely out of the question just because Craig was outworking him quite severely. And yeah, if only you go throw five strikes and fight in three minutes, you're not going to win a decision. Are you? Yeah, um, it's one of those fights, though, that even if Craig's like winning on the numbers, it it doesn't look good. The optics, you know, for like Craig missing a lot of takedowns and kind of looking like an idiot. But like, I know what you mean, you know, Um, because just having Metafield in that parlay, I was like a little nervous at the time. But uh, yeah, then he just landed a big shot. Metafield's takedown defense actually pretty good. Like, I mean, Craig got really deep on the hips and a double leg, if I remember correctly. Yep. And, like, obviously that was a foul there because Paul Craig has got deep on your hips, but Manifield stopped it quite well considering how bad, how, you know, he, he yeah. can create, create, like, a perfect entry and still stopped it. Yeah, so whenever I'm, like, evaluating takedown defense, um, one, I had seen Manifield have good takedown defense in other fights, so that's why I ended up playing him. And whenever he was on the floor, I didn't think he was, like, bad what were Ke- that kennedy guy was really green like you can tell he he was like thinking through the motions i feel like menafield might have actually wrestled in high school but usually when i can tell someone has pretty good take takedown defense if someone gets deep onto your hips i don't always fault you for that because you could just kind of get caught in position or out of position if you watch gustafson jones that was kind of an example where jones just got caught out of position it's not because he has bad takedown defense but if you can then stop someone when they get deep on your hips like that, I think that shows because it shows like you're already kind of um, behind, but you can kind of readjust and get out. So, um, yeah, I actually thought that was pretty impressive by Metafield. Uh, t- technical Tim believes John Jones is a bad wrestler. Uh, <laughs> so we need to take out that. It's no problem. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I I have a huge soft spot for Paul Craig because he's Paul Craig. You so love Paul Craig, happens. yeah. That you that like broke your heart. How could he? How could you dislike Paul Craig? <laughs> it's just it's just, like, it's just hilarious. Like if Ortega was like clicking on to Bolton Division and maiming people, I would like Ortega. Yeah. If Paul Craig. If yeah, if, I I don't mind it. If it's just like this memes zone bottom of shit division. If um Paul Craig was like right, actually no, light heavyweight. If Paul Craig was like ranked, I'd still be cheering for him. Just because. Like, John Jones leaves to Paul Craig would be the best. What's up with Craig always just, like, talking shit to every one of his opponents? For Like, like Metafield seemed like he wasn't even... Like, Metafield just seemed like a normal dude who, who wasn't even... Who was kind of like, dude, fucking relax. <laughs> Craig is just, like, staring him down while they're getting announced. Like, I don't know. Craig, always, he did that to that Magomed Ankalaev guy, too. And you could tell Uncle Live didn't even like know English and was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Have you ever heard of a magical drink called Buckfast? Uh called what? Buckfast. It's um it's a Scottish fortified wine, which is essentially a Red Bull mixed with wine. Oh, okay. It is the lifeblood of Glasgow, where Paul Craig is from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Glasgow is the Florida of Scotland. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's, it's it's awful, but just yeah, it's it's very bacon to the people over there. Um, gotcha, gotcha. Drew Dober executed Apollo Hayes. Um, why am I pronouncing all R's as H's now? I've just become affected with Gracie logic. Um, yeah, Apollo Hayes died. Um, anything else to say about that? No. Um, I even though it happened quick, like. I do think Dober's really improved, so I kind of wanted to give him his props, you know. Um, like if you yeah, compare, yeah, if you compare him to like 2015 to 2016, because sometimes you'll just have people in the UFC who never improve. Like you, you'll see a fight four years ago, and they don't look that much different. But pretty much every part of his game has improved, and his hand speed has actually gotten like pretty good. Um, and I think he's even worked on defense a little bit too. He's still like pretty hittable, but. He's improved a lot. I've been impressed by him. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree. Like he should have beaten. I think he beats Darius like sixty percent of the time at least, probably seventy five percent of the time at least. Yeah, I was on uh, Darius there, and that was frightening, and I, I got no, bailed out. Yeah, we both got bailed out. That was fucked. But, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, that was fucked. Um, I got Dope Professor Hayes to end by KO at like plus one thirty, which I was very happy with. <laughs> like the RTD went to minus one fifty, and KO stayed at one plus one thirty. I was like, yeah, might as well. Yeah, I can never get ends by sub or ends by KO. And when when you told me that line, I was like, God damn it, I wish I could get that. <laughs> but um that was a really good line. Alright, so Vinga Vince Pichel versus Roosevelt Roberts. Um that was a bit scary for the first round, but then Vince Pichel beat up the shitty uh, <laughs> Roosevelt, that was Roosevelt Roberts' first real fight. And Roberts actually impressed me. Like his hands looked legitimately better than I thought they would. Um, yeah, like I, I, I played Pichel, um, on track and I thought as far as just like how close, how competitive the fight was, I thought Pichel should have been like slightly, I thought it was about a 50, 50 pre-fight and it kind of looked like it was about 50, 50 or Pichel should have been a little bit of a favorite, like minus one fifty. Um, yeah, I agree. Like I thought Roberts looked better than I even thought, like his hands are good. <laughs> he he kind of pieced up Pischel until he kind of started slowing down and kind of got overwhelmed by the other attacks of, of Pischel. I felt like Pischel in the first round was too content to sort of sit on the outside. It wasn't until Pischel really started crashing in the pocket they managed to really uh, fluster Roberts. And then he, uh, whenever he also mixed in takedowns too, kind of like crashing the pocket and then mixing in takedowns and kind of making Roberts uh, guess a little bit, that's kind of when he started really pouring it on, I feel. Yeah, I'm... I'm actually more interested in Roberts as a prospect after that than I am before the fight. I think Vince Pichel was actually pretty legit. Like, Pichel was letting the game go on like a championship run. So I think he's like probably in that sort of top 30 lightweight sort of area. Yeah, like, like if I, I think. first like close or something, sure. I'd be down to watch that. Yeah, I think Pichel's a guy who can pretty much compete with just about anyone, but um, like the top guys w- would, would beat him. Um, but he's like a, a perfectly acceptable like middle class light heavyweight. Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah, there's plenty of interesting fights there. Like yeah. Michelle versus Iquinta or something is a rematch. That even that'd be pretty fun. Yeah. Like Michelle Iquinta, Michelle versus Felder, those sorts of guys. I think that'd be compelling. Yeah, definitely. Um, Roberts interests me more as a prospect after seeing that. On the other hand, I kind of feel like I I, I just see a lack of a real A game with him. And, like, he's athletic, but he's not, like, insanely athletic. So I just don't see him that having that higher ceiling. He's, he's definitely going to stay in the UFC, but he's not, like, a top prospect, if you know what I mean. Yeah, he'll he'll just float around probably kind of like a, like a fun, um, occasional lightweight. And I think he'll... I think the only way he's going to break into the top 15 is if he just gets favorable matchups in a row. Like we, we've seen that happen with people who, who they just happen to get kind of a good um, track to ranking with their matchups. But yeah, like he, he is young though, but at the same time, like he kind of just seems underdeveloped in quite a few areas, but I still thought his striking looked way better than I thought it would. Um, I was actually impressed. Yeah, definitely agree with that one. Um, Demian Meyer versus Tony Martin. I know you played Meyer pre-fight. I passed because I just didn't feel it. So, um, that was an interesting fight I found. Demian Meyer still looks still looked incredible when he's on, but I did I did think that the third round should be a ten eight, just because you can't do nothing. Um, 
Yeah, so I, I don't know if I'm being biased or not. Like, I try not to be, but I'm sure um, naturally we all are at times. But I don't think so, because if you if you kind of, like, compare it the first and second round, Martin did the grappling, kind of did the grappling equivalent of not doing anything. Like, he just put his back against the cage and just sat there. And Maya was like, okay, I can't really, like, do anything because you're doing that. So... I think if you like compare what Maya did in the third round to what Martin did, um, it, it was just kind of like the gra- grappling equivalent. I know it looks better. It looks worse on the eyes whenever you're actually running like Maya was in the third one, the third round. But I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. But Yeah, I, I do. Get, yeah, I know what you mean. Like Martin was essentially just like canceling. He was just willing to concede position as long as he didn't get finished. He was conceding the rounds too, just like Maya did, because he didn't want to get finished. And Maya was conceding the third round because he didn't want because he had the fight in the bag, you know. True. Uh, I, um, I'm just surprised the ref didn't warn Maya for Tamendi in the third round. Least, agreed. You know. That's something I totally agree with. And I, I think if he would have warned him with um, timidity and then took a point away on like a second thing, I think that would have been totally fine. But I don't yeah. think that's a 10-8 either. Espe- like. I think it could be, but if you contextualize the fight, I don't think it is, you know? Um, but I don't know. It, it, it's weird because it's kind of like an unprecedented. We don't see that that often. But yeah, I, wonder, I wonder if there's anything in the rules where you can like justify a 10-8 there. Or I, I'm sure you could, but I just feel like the first two rounds were also dominant with Martin deciding to not do anything. Like He, he wasn't even trying to defend himself. He was just sitting there. Um, with his back against the cage, so he wouldn't get subbed. I mean, second round wasn't entirely one by traffic, but yeah, I, I can see your logic there. Um, yeah. Joe B, um, best grappler of all time. Um, Goat. Um, that should have been the main event. Um, like, fucking Joe B scrambling is insane, isn't it? Just top class. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I was really impressed. Uh, Benavita is just kind of the odds makers always underestimate him, I feel, especially in his like later run that's been going on the last few fights. I think um, Sergio Pettis, like I was big on him against um, Perez. Um, yeah. Oh, good pick. I, I, was, I wasn't on Benavidez there. I think I played Perez actually, and it was a dumb pick. I, know, I just looked at that. I was like, Perez, oh, I thought a lot of that was because I just never rated him. Um, Who's the guy Perez beat before that? The. Um... Torres. Yeah, I've never rated Torres at all. So I was like, oh, is he seriously being hyped that much off the um, Torres win? <laughs> I um, think I played Perez because I thought Perez was like, showed a lot of, I, I thought he was actually pretty good. I, I wasn't sure how good he was though, but it was also Benavidez just didn't look good against Pettis. Um, I thought, I thought there was a big decline. That's kind of why I was doing it. But I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe Benavidez just had an off night. I didn't think he looked as good against Pettis. Oh, I definitely. Pettis' performance is definitely a cloud. But like, if he gets Pettis, still worked his way back into the fight and all that. It wasn't like he got completely shellacked. Like he got dropped in the first round and hurt, but then he just kind of kept on keeping on, sort of thing. Yeah, it was more right. so. It was more so his chin didn't look all that good, and he his he kept going for this like knee tap takedown, and his wrestling, like the speed of his takedowns and stuff, kind of looked slower than usual. Um. So I didn't know. I thought maybe it was a decline and it was kind of just wrong, you know? I think he's definitely slowed down a little bit, but just not enough. Uh, yeah, Joe B, Joe B, in terms of like pure fighting skill, has to be in like the top 15 of all time. Just in terms of how I, good he actually is. I think even just out of accomplishments, I think he might be top 15 of all time. Like if you, even if you look at his losses, it was uh, Cruz and Mighty Mouse, like he has five losses. Four of them were two losses to DJ and Cruz, and both of those he had like splits against both those guys, and then he lost a split by to Sergio Pettis. And um, I even think he might have won that Pettis fight, to be honest. Um, and it, like if you look at if you just like look at his wins, like the guys he's beaten, like Formiga twice, uh, Dustin Ortiz, a couple prospects like Perez in there, Cejudo. Uh, yeah, he, he's a monster. Yeah, yeah, he's incredible. Um, yeah. So, of course, you already covered Nagano versus JDS. Um, I just yeah. chucked a bunch of Nagano KO on it. Plus 160 at the last second, because I was like, fuck it. Yeah. I won that, but I didn't feel particularly good about it. I don't know. I just, I, I, 
like, the garden just annoys me. It's a particular <laughs> genre of fighter. It's just like, oh, it's just, I just dislike pure athleticism trumping everything else. At least if Lewis, at least Lewis struggles. At least Lewis has like problems. The guy that was just like, oh, he just killed somebody. That's great. <laughs> His power is just, he's just kind of like a, just a machine, you know? Yeah, it's, it's just content. It's just this weird sort of out of context shit. I don't know. It's just ugly. Yeah. All right. So, on to UFC 239. Um, um, speaking of otherworldly power, Julia Avila. I think she's going to be the um, multi white women's champion by sometime by the end of this year. Do you think so? <laughs> so she um, seems to hurt people. I'm not, I don't understand how. She just hurts people on the tape. Yeah, I need to tape a little more on this, but I didn't like Avila's last fight against, uh, fuck, what was her name? I think it was some Invicta fight. But then what I can't. Sense? Sorry? I think it was Sarah Connors, maybe, or was it my getting confused? Oh, Alexa, Alexa Connors. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, but then I kind of watched her against Nico Montano, and I was a little more impressed in that fight, and I realized she actually is competent on the floor. Um, but at the same time, I'm not going to play someone who's minus two forty, like a women's MMA fight, which could kind of just get sloppy. So, yeah, th- she seems to hit pretty hard, though. Um, Kincaid's not bad, though. Or Kianzad, whatever the fuck her name is. Yeah, um, I don't know. I tend to only do business with winners, so um, I, I, I do feel like Kianzad's where I, sh- I should be betting. But no, Avilia's tape actually has like impressed me more than I expected for minus 240 regional debut from regions and women WMA. Like, Kianzad's yeah. definitely got a path to victory, and like, it wasn't like Avilia showed like elite grappling, but she showed competent grappling. Like yeah. she, she beat Montano's ass. She yeah, she beat Montano very clearly. Yeah, and Montano is not bad. Um, so, so a year and a half ago, it wasn't like this was like Eon. Yeah, she Janu- beat, um, I think it was January of 2017. So yeah, like pr- pretty recently, like two years. Yeah, it was like three months before her TUF run. So like it was still Montano. Montano. Yeah. Yep. And um, yeah, she beat Renault like fucking 2012. So that's not that very anything against that, but still. And the media yeah. just seems to have this fucking power. It just seems to have power, which I do not understand where it comes from. Yeah. Um, Ismail Nordiev versus Chance and Contrary. <laughs> I'm not betting <laughs> this, but I, I just... My MMA got an MMA sense is just telling me that Nordiev's going to get whooped and it's going to be funny as fuck because the Pajera's fight will just be this one strange outlier performance. <laughs> Yeah, I taped this, and um, I, I think, like, Rencounter's Path is just wrestling and, like, something, you know, getting success going down there. And I think, overall, he probably can't get that path going. Like, I mean, there's an outside chance, but I kind of watched some of his other fights, and I feel like Nardiev has good enough hips and wizards and kind of understanding of wrestling to be able to fend him off, and he's a better striker, so... I do think it is hilarious how he automatically goes from like plus 500 to minus 500 in one performance, but it was a yeah, good performance though against Prezeris, but it was also just bridging out of Mount versus like, I don't know, Prezeris looked terrible in that fight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he bridged Mount three times, and that's like consistent grappling. And also, it just they both kind of gassed and slowed down. It was kind of a slop fest at a certain point, so... I know I'm tempted to take a shot on Rencontre, but I'm probably not going to touch it. <laughs> uh, this definitely just 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 seems like a spot where the hype would just is just overshot, in my opinion. Yeah, pretty this, much. This card is taking on the theme of the last two cards, where there's a lot of kind of like favorites that I don't think they should be this heavy, but which underdogs are you going to play? Type of thing. <laughs> um, Next card against with Ladd and Durand. I mean, it's like a, a better card as far as just a lot of like minus 120s for even money people. So, yeah, should be good. Um, Edwin Shabazian versus Jack Marshman. Um, I actually feel I actually feel more comfortable with the favorite level here just because Shabazian's actually gonna wrestle as like his first choice, <laughs> yeah. and Marshman yeah. was last seen robbing um, Don Phillips. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I picked up a bunch of Edmund Shabazian um, submission at plus 1,400, which I'm very happy with, so 
He's like, I don't yeah. feel like he, his KO line should be like minus 120 when fuck it is right now because it's like Chavez is an elite hitter or anything like that. And the sub is very live, in my opinion. Agreed. That that's the best line um, that I've seen too. That sub line. It uh, if, if you look like Shabazzian's wrestling, um, I'm kind of like I don't know. I can be kind of like pretentious and annoying when it comes to wrestling, but his wrestling really impressed me against Stewart because I think Stewart. I've been kind of saying this for a while now. I think Stewart's just like get up games. Like he's a really hard to, guy to keep Matt returning because he's so strong and he's kind of like randomly learned wrestling defense in the last couple of years and Shabazian really impressed me. He, he, he meddled in California state, which is kind of hard to do in high school. So yeah, he's good. Um, and I feel like he could just do that whenever he wants. And he was putting hooks in against Stewart too. And I, it just kind of like screamed to me that he could probably get like rear naked jokes if he went for them. But He's still unproven on the feet, in my opinion, though. Like, I don't I don't put stock into Travis Brown elbows and kind of just, like, blitzing someone in the first 20 seconds of the fight. Um, it it kind of almost reminded me, of, but Roberts kind of ended up being pretty good, like, decent on the feet. But Roberts would kind of blitz some stuff against, what was his name, Giffords, and then he would go for a takedown. And I wasn't sold on it. Like, I, I, I want to see more than just a pocket of an exchange type of thing. And so I'm a little skeptical of Shabazian on the feet, but he does seem athletic enough to where he could just like maybe land something big and then go for a takedown or something. So uh, I, I think he should just kind of wrestle fuck Marshman, but I think that submission line's definitely off because Marshman yeah. is kind of if he decides to wrestle back. fuck, he'll dominate. So yeah, so if he does so, um, Yudong versus Perez. Um... I feel like Yudong should be busier here. Perez has kind of overshot his actual competency because he keeps winning these mean decisions. Um, yeah. Pretty much. Like, you know, he, Wineland beat him. Alcantara was one of the worst fights of all time. Um, Sukuntar should have beat him. Um, yeah. Even Jorgensen kind of was... I remember, was he winning that fight? They got, like, a random knee injury? Yeah. Very, yeah. He's kind of just like Perez has kind of just overshot his actual level by quite a margin, but I don't know. Yeah, the dog should be busier, but and he's very um, juicy team alpha male guy. Pretty sure you're big on your dog, aren't you? Yeah, he. Um, yeah, I agree. He should win. Um, I like his in and out movement. He's light on his feet. He has good hand speed. But um, I played him around like minus one ninety to two hundred, but I cap him. At- I kept him probably like closer to minus 300. So I think the lines kept kind of like lost its value at minus 240. But um, yeah, so. Yeah, it's about my feelings. Um, I can't really get that strong a feel for you, Dom, but so, uh, I, think, I think he's going over time. Um, I think that Vince Morales guy he fought recently, especially in that type of yeah. fight, like a boxing fight, is pretty good. Um, yeah, Vince like, Morales is not bad. Like opinion. Morales and Perez in a fight, it would probably just be a a fight that Morales could maybe even win. Um, Cause Perez doesn't really do much. Like that would be a competitive fight. And, and Yud- Yudong looked really good there. I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. Yudong's got the best length. I believe, I believe he's got, he's going to great things. Um, Marcos versus Gadalha. I think we're both on this more from the trading point of view than we are from a betting point of view. Yep. Yeah, Gadalha just looking depleted lately. She gasses in so quickly. And it's, how does a hundred fifteen pound woman gas that hard? I don't understand. Yeah, man. Um, I don't get it. Uh, w- one of my buddies who, who watches MMA, who I talk a lot of MMA with, just like can't. He he gets like mad because Gedalia gas is so hard. He's I don't know. He's like convinced that she doesn't put the work in, but it could just be a genetic thing. Um, but she gas is just people. really, really bad. There's plenty of people who don't put the work in and other weight classes who are twice as big as her, who don't, who still don't gas that fucking hard. Yeah, I mean, she she gasses. Has been a cardio. Has been a cardio for her. Yeah, I I don't know what it is, but it um it's bad and it's consistent every fight too. She, I as far as the matchup, I think it's actually just pretty close. Um. Godelia just, I, I think her striking isn't very good. I think Marcos can maybe go with the Sparza game plan and just kind of sprawl and brawl. 
Um, Marcos does slow down a little bit too, and people have like rightfully pointed that out. But I don't think she slows down to the degree of Gaudelia. Um, but I think it's just going to be a close split decision or like a close 29, 28 decision for someone. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I, I'll prob I got on Marcos to plus 240. Arbitrage opportunity is already there, but I might wait it out a little more. So. Yeah, that makes about sense. Um, yeah, I'm just seeing if I can get Gadalia at like minus 200, probably my target. But even I think even once the uh, money starts getting late, you can see it come even further. Yeah, I got plus 240, so I can already cash out. But yeah, I'm okay. I'm happy to leave it for now. Um, Marcos can get caught in bottom position and held down at times, and that's like kind of what Gaudelia. God, yeah, the thing that pisses me off about Gaudelia is when she's gassed, she like knows it. And she'll just take you down and lay on you and not even try to advance. Like she'll body triangle a leg, like in half guard. Do you know what I'm talking about? How you kind of like it's kind of like a yeah. shutdown. She'll yeah. do that. And so it's really she's kind of just vocalizing. She's not even trying to do anything. So that's kind of the path for her, I think. But I think Marcus will actually like score some offense with her hands a little more. But yeah, it's kind of a shit show. But a new line came out. Marlon Vera's minus three twenty five against No Helen Hernandez. Um, I've never, I've always felt Ma- Marlon Vera has always kind of been kind of mean to me. Like he just seems to lose a lot of fights. So he just randomly wins them. Yeah, so I have no idea who No Helen. I haven't done any tape on No Helen Hernandez. I'm just looking at his record, there's a lot of <laughs> I, decisions here. So I think I saw this guy in LFA. Um, I don't think he's. I, I can't remember those. So I don't want to like give wrong advice. So yeah, I don't really, I mean this, that probably seems right. The standard debutante is like a pretty big underdog coming in. Yeah. This guy, this guy, I just looking at his record, he looks like a low average debutant. So yeah. So the line's right. I think like I'd, I'd fade better if I had, if somebody with a bit more potential, it was just somebody with a bit more potential, but yeah, about right. Hey, yeah, Pierce. yeah like Charles Pierce. <laughs> like um, literally Pierce Taylor. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, next fight, Alan Melendez. Uh, lines um, too lines too wide for for Alan. He doesn't throw enough. He throws like two something strikes per minute. Um, Melendez is aggressive. Alan doesn't throw kicks, and that's kind of the big thing that's been giving Melendez issues. Um, I think the wrestling will mostly cancel out, but um, I think Melendez probably out grapples Alan if it goes there. Yeah, Alan kind of never really dominated. Like, who is Alan really dominated with grappling? Mesa? Amir Khan um, was very Amir Khani and Burnell kind of like were getting some grappling success on him, and Alan would kind of turn it around and. I don't think like I think Melendez isn't like a, an average like a, he's a decent wrestler. I wouldn't put Melendez too ahead of Burnell or Amir Khani personally. Like so, I I think it will mostly cancel out. Um, like Allen's kind of hard to hold down in my opinion. Like I think Burnell's a really good wrestler. So, um, yeah, I mean Melendez is probably if anyone's getting top position, I think it would be Melendez. Like I Melendez is a good enough wrestler where you can't just like lay on top against him. But I think it will mostly cancel out. But I, I'm kind of just interested if Melendez can get on the inside and get his boxing going because he's got that kind of wrestle boxing scrappy style. Um, and, and also, there's a huge step down competition for him. Like it's going from Stevens to Barbo, Stevens to Barboza. And yeah, leg kicks were an issue, but those leg kicks against Stevens and Barboza were both yeah. elite leg kicks. Yeah, like Barboza is the best leg kicker in UFC history. Yeah, this this is the first dog I'm thinking about playing so far. Like the only play I have so far is song, um, and then I'm gonna arb Marcos. But I'm yeah, I'll, I'll probably have some type of play on Melendez. Like I know he's old and everything, but plus three ten is fucking insane here. And Allen doesn't throw strikes. Um, yeah, that's my thing. I feel like Allen's win conditions are a very low. I mean, unless Melendez just comes out and is fucked, like it's possible Melendez, w- which could happen. Yeah. But even like yeah, his durability was still fine against Stevens Barboza. He took some nasty shots, but yeah, it wasn't like his chin was fighting. I, yeah, I don't think he lost those two fights for like being 
slow or, or for, for like having slowed down or lost a step. I think he kind of just looked like he does and yeah. he just, they, they can kick well. That's all it really was. Like I didn't see him slow down at all and he hasn't been like KO'd or taken damage since. So yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like, I feel like he yeah, could just I, make it competitive. Even when Rinaldi threw, like, pulled the trigger at times, he would have sequences of being competitive. Like, I played Allen heavy there, but like, even Allen just kind of just like won those rounds because Rinaldi didn't do anything, and Melendez will not just stand there. Like, Melendez is scrappy as fuck. Um, and Melendez so yeah. is both taller and longer. Yeah, yeah, he's he's got the the, the height advantage, right, and the and reach. Baseball. Yeah, like two inch, I think one inch height, two inch reach. Yeah, and um, I, I just Alan's definitely put up like his two sort of skill sets are very sort of scrambly, but decisionally grappler or very low volume striker. I can't yeah. trust either of those skill sets at minus four hundred. Yeah, and, like yeah, I, I could see Alan looking good, but still just you know just winning it by like a five strike margin. And in the day, he beat Jordan Rinaldi. Jordan yeah. Rinaldi sucks. Yeah, you know, he sucks. Like, yeah, like Alan's best win is uh, what either the. Uh, Mir- I mean, he had a split decision win against Amir Khani. So, like, if Amir Khani can get a split decision win, like Melendez, Melendez would probably beat Amir Khani. To be honest, like yeah. I don't think Amir Khani could out wrestle him, and I think on the feet, Melendez would probably just out busy him. Um, so yeah, this lot, this line is just off. Uh, at, like I still think Alan can win. You know. Um, but at minus 370, that's that line's off. Yeah, like if you could guarantee me the same Melendez came in who came in against Stevens, I would say I would put Melendez like minus 150. Yeah, um, I need a deep tape. Like, I kind of like just like watched some tape and it was like, what the fuck is this line? Like, I'm definitely playing it, but I need a deep tape to like have precise odds. But it, um, yeah, I think it's just a close fight. That's all I think it is. Yeah, definitely. And I think I think Melendez has the most like upside in terms of like ability. While Savini, Melendez also has downside because he could just look two thousand years old. Actually, yeah. watch the um, submission underground bout he just did to Pat Healy. It was like two months ago, and he actually looked, he looked fairly athletic there. Like yeah. you know, his chin might have yeah. gone, but I'd be surprised if his chin went from being like elite, elite, to being shit in two years of no striking. I don't think his own. chin will like. I'm. I don't think his chin will be gone at all. He's always had a great chin, and he, he wasn't even like he was never wobbled or anything in the last two fights. His just legs got destroyed. Yeah, pretty much. Like even Stevens was hammering him at certain points, and Melendez was fine. And, you know, it's, it's, Stevens yeah. hits a lot harder than Arnold Allen. <laughs> yeah, Mel- Melendez is tough as fuck. Like he's like underratedly tough. Um, yeah, but I, yeah. I, 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 don't get this logic. I mean, my suspicion is maybe some sort of injury or something on behind the scenes, but I think it's just people not contextualizing like the style matchup and, and just seeing like Melendez lost two striking fights badly recently. Allen's coming off like a lot of wins in a row. Um, and Melendez is like a layoff. Like, I think they're just, it's kind of just narrative based capping. Like, I feel like it's not stylistically based ca- capping. Um, and that's yeah, books pretty. Do tend- yeah, books do tend to overplay momentum because, like, the books probably looking at this going, "Oh, it's zero Garner zero four run against Garner five zero run." But yeah, Allen could easily be two three in those fights. Yeah, for sure. Like, one judge Amir Carney and two round three or Tigers. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. not, it's not like Allen's been completely destroying his opposition. His opposition, for the most part, is pretty low level. Like yeah, Amir Khani is his best win, and Amir Khani can't do the dumb Amir Khani stuff to give him the win. Yeah, pretty much. Like this line's stupid. The guy doesn't throw strikes either. Um, maybe, maybe he'll throw strikes here because Melendez will make him because Melendez yeah. actually pushes a pace. So that's maybe something. But I, I want to see it. You know, like at minus three seventy, I, I want to see it. <laughs> um, Nothing I've seen. Malin on tape says he should be minus like. There's like three people in the division I could put uh, Alan as a minus 370 over. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, like, like r- maybe, maybe Rinaldi. <laughs> like a couple, maybe a couple other people. Um, if, if, 
if I could trust Ronaldo to actually do something, I think he'd be, wouldn't be minus 370. Yeah, agreed. Even Chris, yeah. even Chris Fishgold, I wouldn't like have as a minus 370 over Albert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, there are some mediocre featherweights. I would still be fine playing at plus 300 against uh, Arnold Allen. Yeah. Um, Sanchez Chiesa. Uh, I haven't taped this yet. Like I watched a little bit of Kiesa, and I did actually like Kiesa's defensive grappling against Dariush. Whenever I kind of, I kind of watched that fight. I wanted to see some grappling based fights with him. And um, yeah, so um, I wouldn't play Kiesa at this line because Diego can compete even out of his prime in like a like a grappling scrap fest, and he's hard to submit. Um, but yeah, so I. I Yes, I still kind of have like decisions to make. Um, Kiesa might KO him, but that line is probably where it should be. And yeah, that's all I really have to say. I got some Kiesa plus 350 um, KO because lots of books are slow, which I don't mind. Um, yeah, um, Kiesa versus Condit filled me with concern here because like Condit like, almost subbed Kiesa twice. Yeah. Like, yeah, Kiesa ended up tapping him, but that first round was not the one-sided gra- out grappling by any means. I actually had Condit winning the grappling the first round. Yeah. And even yeah. Though, like, the way Kiesa ended up subbing Condit was, you know, Hammerlock, which isn't really a consistent path to victory, in my opinion. Like, Agreed. Yeah, not a scrappy, good, gritty guy, but it's just, it's not like he's an elite submission guy or elite 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 grappler um yeah but i also i also think people are overrunning sanchez a bit off the goal goal, goal performance yeah I think he, goals goals not good and on top of that i think he caught goal on like i think there was something wrong with goal the way the goal gassed so quickly like either goal adrenaline dumped or just yeah gassing like that's off it's one of the most dramatic uh like cardio dumps I've ever seen in the first round, ever. And and he's like a young kid, so that was kind of weird. Um, yeah, he died. That was, yeah, it was ridiculous. He went from like 100 to 0 in 2 minutes. It was, it was like um, Raish or something, but even worse. It reminded me of like someone who's never trained ever, like just kind of like fucking around grappling for the first time and not pace and just kind of like not realizing that they're going to tire right away and just dying a couple minutes in. Like someone who like doesn't exercise and shit. So that was really weird. Yeah, agreed. Um, On to Rocco Blackovic. Uh, I feel like Blackovic. Boxing could actually give Rockhold problems, but also I feel like Rockhold could should just Rockhold him. But Rockhold has a whole issue where his game is completely stupid and doesn't really fit together. Yeah, um, I think if Rockhold decides to grapple, that'd be interesting because he could probably like his top game is amongst the elite of the sport. Um, yeah, like it's really good, and. So, like, that could happen. So, like, just with that alone, I, I feel like he could just, like, win if he felt like it. Um, I do think the boxing could give Rockhold issues, and Rockhold has a terrible chin, and he keeps his hands down, like, straight, you know? I, I feel like he's, like, hittable. But Rockhold is, like, faster, I would thought, on tape, and I feel like he could have success with kicks, um, especially, like, it, this is a Southpaw Orthodox fight. Like, I feel like he could land that left inside kick. Um, I've heard I've heard issues of like Rockhold's left leg being hurt and him yeah. not. Be, so I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, like I'll probably not touch this fight to be honest. Yeah, same. Like I feel like Rockhold should win it, but I, I don't. I don't like him at that sort of favorite price because he's like Rockhold. Yeah. Uh, like I hope Blackwich wins because I like Blackwich, but I, I I'm kind of. Um, I'm going to stay out of this spot. Yeah, I think the best thing to do is stay away. Like, I, I think as far as like potential, Rockhold, Rockhold has way more ways to win here, to be honest. Um, but at the same time, like, yeah, like you said, it's Luke Rockhold. His chin's not very good. And, and Jan, Jan's sneaky with his boxing at times. Yep. On to the uh, main events. Yes. Standing, I think for most people. I'm, I'm happy on Masvidal. I just... Askren, what, his best grappler is actually beating Sinjin Aoki. 
he has absolutely no striking defense. He doesn't really have a long takedown, or he just kind of clenches onto you because it's a joker. Um, it's just uh, I I just do not do not understand the level of Askren love I'm seeing amongst the community. It's just what, why, how, who? Um, yeah, I think the the two. I'm still deciding on how I'm going to play. The only two plays I think that are justifiable are Masvidal or Askren decision. Um, playing Askren at minus 245 is dumb. Um, there's a chance he could maybe prove to be worth that line and maybe the wrestling ends up being too much, but I I wouldn't be so sure about that. And um, I don't think he can finish Masvidal anyway. So why wouldn't you take like the, the even money decision line? I think that's the, the line. Um, as far as the grappling, how it like matches up, I, I see <laughs> I see a lot of people saying like Maya out wrestled Masvidal. Um, so Askren will. Uh, their styles of grappling are way different. And I feel like most people probably don't even know how to categorize them. Like Maya relies on single legs, ha- half guard single leg sweeps, and kind of just like using an underhook to push you up and p- trap you up against the cage. And Askren doesn't do really any of that. He shoots a double. And if the, the double doesn't work, he doesn't bend his waist or he, he doesn't like, he just bends his waist over to where if he fails the double, he can get a body lock type of thing. So his game's just way different. And a lot of the reason why Maya was holding Masvidal down, especially in that fight, was because he was putting hooks in and body triangles. It wasn't like wrestling rides. So Askren and Maya are just like way different in the way they would wrestle or hold down Masvidal. Um, but I think it's Masvidal or Askren decision. That's what I think. Yeah, and also, even with the minus 250 line, I just, when your guy could just like, Get his head taken off. At yeah. Much any moment. I just don't see how. I can't see how he could be dominant enough with just pure wrestling to justify that line. Yeah, I, I heard someone. Is a big line. I've heard people say that this line's way off, meaning Askren should be like minus five hundred, and their kind of reasoning was there's recency bias on people saying he got hurt versus Waller, and they're saying like that made the line closer than it should be. And it's like, have you seen the Jay Huron fight or or the that fight in one FC against that one Russian who wasn't very good but was on steroids? It's like, it's like Askren's very beatable. He he is, and um, I like I actually like Askren. I'm a huge Askren fan. I, I followed him. He, he wrestled in the at Mizzou, and I almost went there for wrestling. I was recruited there, and um, yeah, like I I like Askren a lot, but he has holes and. I just don't think he ha- I just don't think he's a good finisher either. Like I-, I think the finishes he's had are against really bad competition, and he usually goes against the si- he-, he goes to the cards against most fighters who are actually competent. You know, um, yeah, yeah. and, and Mas- Masvidal is going to be really hard to sub. The only time he's been subbed in his career was Toby Amata in like an inverted triangle like ten years ago, and. I don't think Askren can put him away with strikes either. So, yeah, and catching something in the meme stuff every so often is not hugely indicative of being bad grappler. Um, yeah, again, I, uh, people seem to be think looking at that Lawler outcome, like the submission, and seeing a lot better grappling than it really was. <laughs> hey, I don't believe that was actually a submission. I do not believe that you can choke someone with that fake. I literally spent like half an hour with several black belts after that happened. We were workshopping that position. And none of us could get anything fucking going from there. So, like, it wasn't even close. It's too much wiggle room. Um, yeah, so... Uh, That's not a bulldog choke. A bulldog choke is acquired to be in, like, essentially has to be in, like, a choke around the neck. That wasn't... That's just a weird headlock. <laughs> yeah, after re-watching that sequence, he wasn't out either. He, he wasn't out. Um, I originally thought... I kind of was originally siding with Askren on that one. Um... Because I thought the way Lawler's hand went limp, um, maybe he was out. But if you watch that, it truly was. He was just like saying, fuck this and putting his hand down, just like accepting that he was in like a a tough situation. 
And I, I know the optics didn't look good, but if you see like they did the hand test and he totally passed it and then gave a thumbs up right when Herb Dean did that. And um, I also talked to my jujitsu coach is Ezra Lennon. He's actually quite good. He has a win over Pablo Popovich. Who's if there's any jujitsu heads listening, they know who that is. Um, he's actually friends with Ben Askren too, Ezra Lennon. And even he was saying that that was not, like that sub was not in and he's really he knows bulldog chokes really well and he was saying he wasn't out um so yeah like yeah. i have personally been stuck in that sort of shit for like a minute or two and it's like it's not pleasant i don't like being there but you know uh, you're not gonna get tapped and i feel like also lola's confidence enough he's not just gonna sit there and get subbed like if lola was really feeling it, he would have actually like tried to improve his position I like would be trying to jerk his head around, at least do something. Yeah, in in that point, whenever you just have a bulldog choke like that, you're once you get out, you're free and and you're up on your feet. Like you don't have, like Ben doesn't have any type of wrestling right or hooks in or anything to maintain top position. And I think Ben just kind of grabbed that because he was losing the top position because Lawler was escaping. And I like Lawler was just focusing on defending the choke. That's all he was doing. And like he was, so, he was extremely, he was so conscious. It wasn't even funny. Like the way he was immediately responding, like he was totally with it. Um, but like, yeah, Lola, and, and, wasn't, Lola wasn't even pushing the elbow. <laughs> you think if Lola yeah. was really feeling the choke, he'd be pushing the elbow. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't in. Um, but I, I will say, like, Askren could have maybe like tired. I still think he could maybe he could probably like win that Lawler fight. Like, and I think Lawler could have taken him out too. Um, because I was impressed with the way he kind of ended up getting Lawler down by trapping him up against the cage and using that like trip, you know? Um, but Lawler had just escaped at the same time. So we don't really know what was going to happen in that fight. Um, and Lawler could have easily killed him. So. And even then, Lawler would probably already banked, or at least it could have been 10-8 round, first round. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's not really great sailing. The other worry for Askren here is if he... Say if, like... I, see, I just don't think he can get a finish. And because he can't get a finish, like he needs to win by a decision, which I think is very possible. Um, but what worries me is, like, Masvidal's gonna land some big shots and so he could even like take rounds you know but just like kind of like a, a subjective round of control versus damage type of thing because i just don't think ben can do that much um as far as damage goes like i do think he could control him and keep him down at times but like he, like say if just like uh like if you watch that nikolay oleshkin fight in one fc like he would get up for the end of like for like a full minute or two and start landing shots at will and unanswered on Askren. And it's like, I, I don't see how Masvidal isn't capable of doing that either. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, like if, like if you want to play Askren, just play his, uh, his decision line, playing his money lines, just it's an offline in my opinion. Yeah. I think Masvidal is just straight up. I'd actually favor him straight up. I just ask him really underwhelms me. <laughs> just, well, yeah. Sort of thing. And the way the Lawler fight goes, I just feel like people seem to have seen something that Lawler fight which didn't. Be. Like the fact Lawler had gotten out from under Askren's mount and he got Bulldog. Well, Bulldog. Yeah. So it wasn't like Askren immediately like convened the moment Askren got taken out. And Lawler was not good off his back. Like, Lawler's got great first layer takedown defense, but, you know, historically, if you've actually been able to get Lawler down, you usually had a fairly easy time keeping him down. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I, I taped this fight, and I, I saw just so many different things that kind of, like, screamed each guy could have success. Uh, like, I thought I saw a lot with Masvidal where I thought he could have success. And Askren's so hittable. Like, I don't think people... like. Damien, Damien Maya is really hard to land on on the feet. He's shown that throughout his whole career. He's really only been... He, he got knocked out by Mark Hart like 10 years ago, but he, he's really hard to land clean on, and Askren's really easy to land on. 
Um, a couple things I didn't like for Masvidal Zund is sometimes when someone shoots in, he'll kind of reach for a guillotine or a Darce choke. And whenever you do, that's just a no-no against a guy like Askren. Because if you yeah. do that, it kind of invites Askren into your hips. So then Askren, you can kind of give a takedown to Askren that he didn't really earn, if that makes sense. Um, I've seen him do that a lot. So that was the one thing I didn't like in the Ben Henderson fight and even against Maya later. Um I feel like if Masvidal comes in with like more of a disengage and not trying to go for guillotine type of things, take down. And it's not like he's jumping a guillotine. He'll just like hold it to threaten on the feet. But doing that against Askren could probably get you taken down. Um, but yeah, like I, I also just don't think Askren can do enough damage to where even Masvidal getting taken down isn't the end of the world type of thing. And also have Luis Santos fight. You watched the Luis Santos? Yeah, well, that was a, uh, that was one FC where he got. It, it was like a no contest, right? Yeah, no contest. I could. I fought one. He was getting his ass kicked, like completely. That's one I found particularly concerning. <laughs> it's just not good. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Oh well, that's what it is. Um. Yeah, I have Masvidal straight up. Um, Nunez vs. Holm. I like the overs here. I actually like the overs here quite a bit. Like, I feel like Nunez is quite binary. Like, I, if you look at the record, she's only got two stoppages that went over one and a half rounds. So I feel like you're either getting Nunez going crazy in round one, or you're getting her doing essentially nothing to a tepid, boring decision. Um. Yeah, like... It kind of just depends how Nunez approaches it, you know? Like, if she comes out aggressive, then the overs could be in trouble. But even if she comes out aggressive, I think Holly's, like, pretty skilled enough defensively to where she can avoid stuff. Um, yeah, like, I, I hear you. <gasps> Fight starts round three is minus 150. What? I'd um, rather have to go to the distance if it starts round three, personally. Just yeah, like because it right depends on... Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's like heavyweight logic, where it's either kind of like it's either going to be done in seven, it win like the first round, or it's probably going distant. Yeah, I know what you like, mean. I, I've got a little bit of a home decision, and I've got a bit on going to distance. Home decision, just because I feel like if it does go to the decision, it's going to be a dreadful low volume, nothing happens decision, split decision sort of situation. Yeah. Um, as far as money line goes, I originally thought I was going to like home and I think you might, but, uh, I do think something I was kind of noticing on tape. Like if you watch like the Beth Correa fight and other fights is she doesn't really land offense all that well. Um, and like, like even, even like she had like a close fight with Pennington back in the day or, or like Renault or, or, um, and, and I feel like sometimes she just doesn't like the only, like she just doesn't land damaging shots if that makes sense. And I yeah. feel like Nunez will land damaging shots, and she could really like hit the hit the calf a lot with those calf kicks. And so that's kind of what worries me about home is I just don't think she'll do enough to like land and differentiate herself. Um, so that's kind of something I I saw, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm probably not going to have anything on this fight, to be honest. Yeah, I've, got, I've just got a feeling it's going to be an ugly, contentious decision. That's that that could happen, sort of yeah. Yeah. Why they joke. Like, and I feel like home will be, like, and home will just be, like, active enough, and Nunez will be not active enough, but it will just come to this, like, what the fuck's happening, sort of decision situation. And, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's weird because I feel like Nunez has the capabilities to kind of like land some shots if she wants to, especially on on uh, Holmes' lead leg. But I see what you mean. Like even Nunez, like people forget, like Nunez has had some really good performances lately. But even against like Shevchenko, those fight that that last fight was really uneventful. Um, and Holm. Shevchenko was kind of like uneventful other than Shevchenko landing check left hooks. Um, so yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I know that's a little MMA math, but it's sometimes hard to know exactly the pace of how a striking fight will go because it's kind of like a choice of the fighters. And it's kind of like Nunez's choice here. So uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. 
And even if Nunez does actually go out hard in round one, I could just see her not finishing home and kind of just gassing for 20 minutes. Or her Hopefully. realizing she used too much energy and deciding to kind of like coast after that, you know? Yeah. Nunez just seems to have Woodley disease where she's very aware of her own gas tank. Yeah. Even against Pennington, she didn't really force, she didn't really try to force a finish. Yeah, she like had like pockets of aggression and that's it. Yeah. Pennington's eye just kind of exploded, so she took it, but, like, it wasn't like she was trying to actually finish it. She just kind of, oh, fuck, her eye exploded. I might as well kill her now. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It, um... Uh, yeah, I'm... It's, it's, I'm not really looking forward to these title fights particularly strongly. Um, yeah, John Jones versus Thiago Santos. Um, everyone has to be cheering for Thiago Santos, clearly. The only correct person to be cheering for. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to have action here. Um, uh, could Santos catch him? I think it's possible. Um, but, like, um, it, it was, so one thing I saw, like, I'm not playing this, just, I don't know, because other people like to have money on every fight. But the, Joe, you can land on Jones. And, and I, I've seen a lot of people, like, talk about Jones's distance control lately, about how good it was, because it looked good against Gustafson. But if you look at the type of fighter like Santos is, he, he can close distance really well with like athleticism and explosions. Like, I mean, I'm sure you know that. But uh, Gustafson doesn't really do that. Gustafson doesn't like explode in. He, he more so like uses actual like his range and technique to land with punches. Like he doesn't close the distance with athleticism. And Cormier actually kind of, will close with athleticism and not technique because Cormier is not that technical. Um, and he was able to land on Jones. So I could see like Santos's blitzes working at times because I've seen people kind of use distance closing athleticism and they've actually hit Jones where Gustafson, like, I, I don't know. I feel like people are saying like Jones has become a randomly really good defensive boxer um, but I think it's because Gustafson doesn't really have the ability to close distance. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but that's just something I randomly saw on my own. Um, but yeah. I, yeah, I do get what you mean. Gustafson tends to operate more at the end of his own reach. Like, his really reach, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Santos has to kind of bite the mouthpiece here, in my opinion. 100%. I mean, if he does... Yeah, well, uh, go nuts. Like, the... Watching that Santos um, yarn fight may be a bit concerned because it felt like Santos was being a bit technical, too hesitant. Yeah, yeah. like that's nice, but like we need Santos versus Manawa. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 needs, he needs to go nuts, and like he has good enough to pop, like, like, why wouldn't you, you know? And um, I think he's going to, I think he's gonna go nuts because I don't think Jones has much power coming the other way. Um, like like Jones is more of an accumulation guy type of thing to put you away, or yeah, Jones has yeah. very little power. I've yeah. got some Jones submission at five to one, uh, plus four hundred, because I know I, I felt like that line was off. Like I think Jones submission is probably the most likely outcome here. Um, I think it's some type of ground finish with, and it's kind of like what he chooses from there. You know, like if he gets like a back mount, does he put the choke in or does he pound out? Like I could see either one happening. Um, so if the split, like you, what'd you get at plus 400? Yeah. Plus 400 submission. Yeah. yeah that seems to have value. I, yeah. I'm still fairly triggered by that. Um, Gus, um, finish where, um, yeah, Gus could have easily gotten me a naked choke. But no, John Jones had to try and um, do that. That's the thing about Jones props, finishing props, is sometimes it's like he could get either one, and it's just like, which one did he tell his family members to bet on, I feel? Um, so... Clearly, these um, NFL players are all... <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw this great Twitter thread on, like, uh, somebody accusing John Jones of fixing the um, finish, for, uh, for, or fixing the decision for uh, Smith, and it's like uh, his brothers, who are both NFL players, were saying they were with their $2,000 bet slips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm just I'm just playing. Um, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm kind of like made that because Jones is so good to where he can like choose his finishing path, where he could do that if he wanted to. You know, he could like control the outcome. But um, yeah, like 
Um, the the Undermont under might be a decent spot, so I hope that Santos will make Jones finish him. He might, yeah, might but, start round three. It's plus one, plus one, three, six. He might not start round three. Um, I think that's that's pretty good in my opinion. I think Santos is going to go crazy. Yeah, like like if you if you were I don't know if you were Santa's coach, like I would say just go nuts. The only danger of going nuts is uh, maybe getting taken down. Um, you know, like if, if you kind of just like came in hot and, and Jones was just like, fuck this, change levels and took you down. Um, but yeah, I would just be like, dude, fuck this. Just go crazy. That's what I would say. I'd be like, there's no strategy. Just go out and just try to kill him. <laughs> like, like make it, make it a barroom brawl, you know? Pretty much. I hope he does that. Like I should probably get hit someone that plus one, three, six, five and start around three line. I think I just feel like Santos is going to bring the aggression. I think Jones is sensible enough to go. Oh fuck, this guy is going to bring the aggression. I might as well finish him. Like it really, it really depends how long Jones wants to leave him in there for. I guess. Yeah, the reason I don't like any of these props or anything really that much for betting, like, is just it. It's kind of like choices. It's like, does Santos go crazy? Does Jones decide to like get the sub or KO? Um, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I'm probably just gonna stay away from it and just kind of enjoy it. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Like you, you seemed you you got a good line though on Jones' submission. It's now plus one eighty five, which is probably a little more accurate. You know. Yeah, that's that's one thing. That's why I took plus four hundred because it's always been coin flip and might as well. Jones, Jones inside Jones the made. distance mine two, minus two twenty five. That's probably like about right. I don't know. Um. Do I have taken an under and inside the distance? Because I'm not sure Joe Jones will bother finishing him late. Yeah. It'll be one of these ones where either Santos is kind of forcing Jones to finish him, or Jones will just be like going down the down, 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 I can't be fucked. Jones unanimous decision plus 485. Um, I, don't know, mm-hmm. I, hope so. I hope Thiago manages it. I hope Thiago does it. Yeah. One, one, one line that I really like is. <laughs> Masvidal, Masvidal scorecards no action is minus 140 and <laughs> I think that should be like minus 300 but um yeah that was something I saw but um so, random, twi- random twitter um, beef kicking off in the back, in the back end <laughs> people arguing over Ben Askren being an Olympian and how that means he's going to automatically destroy everybody's about grappling <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that's barely a fucking Olympian. <laughs> it's funny. There's a, yeah, like uh, he, he wouldn't be an Olympian in like this stage of freestyle wrestling either. Like American wrestling has gotten really good since 2008. Like he, he made the Beijing team in 2008. And uh, who, who was the guy he kept beating? Um, There's some guy from Oklahoma, some black guy from Oklahoma. That's who he always beat in the finals. I can't, I'm just like blanking, but I don't know, like, What's up? A man. Tyrone Lewis, maybe? I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I think that is. I think that's right. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, he he wouldn't be able to compete nowadays. Um, just, like, the quality of wrestling is going really up. Like, he's not as good as Dick. He's not as good as, like, Burroughs would ever be. Um, like, James Green. Didn't ask, him. Didn't ask him to lose all his matches, too. Like, he yeah. he won one match in the Olympics. Um, the thing is, like it, freestyle doesn't suit his style, though. Like, like I'll I'll, def- I'll defend him. Folk style it is like I think if he wrestled Burroughs in a folk style match, it would be interesting. I would still pick Burroughs to win, but in freestyle, um, it kind of takes mat wrestling out of the equation, and that's where Askren's good on the like on the mat. But as far as like a net takedown game. Like you, you can take, you can get deep in on Askren's hips. Like you can take him down quite easily. Like even like Luis Santos is picking up Askren and slamming him. You know, Lawler did it. Like you can get takedowns on Askren. Um, it's just once he's on the mat, he's a lot more dangerous. I mean, it hasn't been like he's been consistently dominant in the jiu-jitsu areas. Like yeah, and once his name had that really like had a decent back take on him. No, I don't think his. I think his offensive submission grappling is really. Okay. Like if you if you go through, let me go through. Um, when he was fighting, like, like some of those one FC guys since he's been there since like 2014 to 2017, 
he fought a lot of like bad fighters. Some of them were like 40. That Suzuki guy was not good. And he was like 40 at the time. Um, he didn't know how to, f- to defend wrestling. But if you go in his Bellator era, he had uh, six decisions in a row. And I thought he was fighting guys who were kind of more understanding of just like that wrestling type of game, like Ryan Thomas, Dan Hornbuckle, good Nick Thompson, Jay Huron, Douglas Lima. Like they were all fine surviving, you know? Um, and even like some of his finishes were late. Like they're kind of cardio finishes, like, um, like in the fourth round or something. And then whenever he went to the Asian promotion, he was just like getting first round finishes, like three minutes in against terrible fighters. Uh, <laughs> And like the one guy who wasn't bad, that Nikolay Alekishin guy, that I, that's like kind of the fight I always bring up. That was that actually played out the entire fight, five rounds. So he, he's he's not going to finish Masvidal. Even stuff like Luis Santos fights, yeah. <laughs> Again, just watching that, I just can't see how you play him as minus three hundred against anybody UFC caliber. Yeah, like um. As far as like comparing the wrestling of Maya and Askren, I think that's just not smart to do like people are doing, but to you can compare like the actual submission defense, you know, of Masvidal, like seeing him against Maya compared to Askren. And if, if Maya wasn't coming that close, I don't think Askren has any chance of subbing him. Um, I, I would be really surprised if Askren subbed them. I think it would have to be something really random. Um, like some type of like catching a choke off a transition, but Astrid's just not that good of a submission grappler. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's like I didn't take my Astrid at this point. That that would be an interesting fight. Uh, um, because like like Maya could get back takes on Askren for sure. Uh, he could slap in body triangles if Askren got top position. Like we see how quick he'll half guard single single leg sweep you um maya like you can't just hold maya down he'll start actually doing shit um like as far as like from a jiu-jitsu standpoint maya's a better striker which is funny Um, yeah yeah yeah. he like actually has a better strike yeah that that is funny ask him would i also think ask him being deep shit against maya just because like the win there would be such like a tight you have to sort of maintain top position for 10 minutes, I guess. If Masvidal like, wins, I hope we get Asker and Maya, because I actually really want to see that as a fan. Like, that would be a lot of fun, Asker and Maya. And I hope it's a quick Masvidal KO, so Maya will, Asker will be like minus 250 against Maya. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> I, I'm I'm not an Askren hater though. Like if people are listening, like I actually am a big fan of his, and I think he could beat qu- a lot of people. I just think he's, I think he's just lines off against someone like Masvidal. That's all I'm saying. You know, um, I do think he would like out wrestle, especially in a five rounder, quite a few people in the division. I'm a fan of him as like a media personality, but as an actual <laughs> fighter. <laughs> yeah, you you hate him, man. I'm part of his media personality. He's fine. Yeah, he seems he's like a decent guy. That's yeah. Action fighter. Yeah. Fuck that. Get good. Yeah. I feel like the Covington, the, the Covington being like Masvidal's like best friend slash training partner. I think is actually one of the few ones who I do think that's significant. Like you usually don't really look at training partners that much, but if anyone is going to give you preparation for dealing with what Askins get bring to you, it's kind of going to be Covington. <laughs> it's kind of Covington. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that could help. Like Ma- Masvidal's skilled, man. Like, like he, he's really good everywhere. Um, yeah, like I think he has what it takes for even from like the technical wrestling. Like I've seen sequences to where he has what it takes to kind of get away at times, but he does make some mistakes where he'll like reach, he'll kind of like reach for a darts when he shouldn't, and he should just be like focused on kind of underhooking and spinning off and getting away and pushing away and disengaging. Like he can do that though. Um, I, I think if, I think if he comes in prepared with like a smart game plan, he can, he can win. Um, but still I, I, like, like if you're playing Askren, just if you're playing Askren, listening to this, just play his decision line. Just, just do that. You get full return and it's actually like something that m- might be a good bet. 
also the way I see it, just fundamentally, I think Masvidal could actually compete in the grappling. Mas- Masvidal winning the grappling here wouldn't be ridiculous. Uh, I, I think Masvidal I catching some, some type of sub is possible or a club and sub. I think it's very or possible. Just like, good enough to scramble out. Or just being good enough to keep scrambling. Yeah. But like, and Askren, obviously, if this spends any time whatsoever on the defeat, it's fucked. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like he's going to get like, teed off on really bad. <laughs> like, um, even if Askren dominates round one or something, and I think round one is actually a danger round for Askren. I think Masvidal is like quite dangerous with his like how quick he is at kind of getting out of grappling situations early um even if like Askren wins a round like e- each <laughs> that first minute in the next couple rounds when they are standing is going to be really scary <laughs> and like like Masvidal could just get like a couple knockdowns and one is a decision too which would be really funny <laughs> And just also, if Askren slows whatsoever, it's kind of like when was the last time Askren actually went in the distance? Uh, yeah, I want uh, a Leshkin, uh, the uh, like a Shin guy. Because, like, he, hasn't, he hasn't really fought with a live body, so obviously Lawler was a live body and knocked him out. But yeah, um, the last time like Askren actually had to go any real time, amount of time with somebody who could actually grapple with him. Because I think yeah, Masvidal is the best grappler that probably Askren's fought. Yeah. For sure. Um, like, yeah, easily. I just, easily. Yeah. And like, if it just turns out Askren is capable of, if it just turns out Masvidal is actually like capable of winning slash equaling out the grappling, Askren's fucked yeah. like badly. <laughs> yeah. But knowing, um, but knowing Masvidal, Masvidal will pull the old Dustin Ortiz um, strategy of um, having like a, being like the slightly worse grappler. And being a lot better at striking, but continuing to wrestle because fuck you, I want to win the wrestling match. <laughs> definitely happen. Like, remember around Benavidez versus Ortiz? In the very yeah. <laughs> like, Ortiz was starting to, like, really pull ahead in the striking. It's like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm going. But he, just, he just seems to be so frustrated by losing the um, scrambling to Benavidez. Yeah. Um, as far as, like, favorite plays in the card, I... I really don't think there's all that many awesome spots on this card. Like there's a lot of just kind of like huge favorites, but I, um, I like song. I think his lines kind of getting hit. If you can get him around minus 200, I think that's fine or, or better than that. Um, and then I, I talked about the bets. I like in Asker and Masvidal. Um, I think Marcos was good for an ARB opportunity. Uh, what, what do you like in here? Uh, Melendez. Uh, that's a big one. Just, yeah, yeah. This line is just I, why is Alan minus four? I just I don't understand. <laughs> Who is yeah, I, I'm gonna look into that too. Like I just even if I, I the way I say it, even if I was really really high on Alan, I just couldn't justify more than minus two hundred here. I wonder what Marlon Vera's KO line will be. Uh, they should bear late, late should replacement be late replacement regional dudes probably. And this should vary. You can't really trust him to do things. He's got like his very low, weird work rate most of the time, doesn't he? Yeah, that's why you like, just always Luke. have to play his ITD line. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Who knows? Vera could just pull a Sukumtar here. I just, I, Vera's got that sort of like personality in him. How has Mylon Vera versus Sukumtar not happened? I don't know. I, like, I f- yeah. It sounds like a fight that should have happened like five times already. Um, like, it, you look at Nolan Barrow's record and you go, all right, Frankie Sainz, you kind of killed him, which was nice, but didn't really tell you a lot. <laughs> then he lost, what, the first seven minutes to Guido, or the first six minutes to Guido, quite dominantly, before switching it on. And he, <laughs> lost, and he lost the first eight minutes to Walu- Waluigi. So <laughs> it's not like he's been covering himself in glory. And even against Brad Pickett, he was losing, like, 12 minutes of that fight. Yeah. So... <laughs> You know, who was, who was like clear wins in that or killer her and Sainz by like very quick finish and Guang Yo Ning. You know, <laughs> Vera's never really covered himself in glory. Yeah, I hear you. And even Sainz is like 40 and like, you know, he's never really had good shit. He's never, he's classically, classically been tough, but he's never really had much um, striking defense. I could say it was elite knockout or anything. Yeah. I, I am looking to Helen Hernandez has been subbed like twice on regionals in 2015 and he got subbed 
like a year ago, a little more than a year ago. Um, and they've been, they were versus like one and two fighters where he was subbed. So like, yeah, he's probably going to get finished here. Um, so well, most of Vera's subs are either club and subs or Vera like guard subs. It's like he's being, it's like he's a proactive. Yeah, that's true. Like, this no, I mean, he really I'm like, proactive. I've literally just heard of this guy. So I'm wiki capping right now. I'll actually tape and figure it out. But, um, yeah, like I- I've seen Hernandez in LFA before. I know I have. Like I think I, I think I saw him versus his Velasco fight that that Gibson card. But yeah. Um, what's the next card, Lad Dur- uh, Durandamine? That's going to be an event for this podcast. It's like your your rival coming out of the woodwork, Aspen Lad. Actually, considering that, I I just there was no Yonder was the only appropriate play there. My like, Aspen Lad sucks. <laughs> But Grandamy has no grappling, but that's when Lad sucks. Lad just aggressively sucks. Like you, you, you watched you told me yesterday. You watched you bank, you banks, you banks won that fucking fight. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I had no money on that second fight with Eubanks, and it was one that I just it was like the one fight that I missed. Um, I, I saw like the end. I think I saw the second and third round. Um, but yeah, I had it. I had it a draw. That's what I had it. I thought. Eubanks won round one and three, and then I thought round two was a 10 8. Um, yeah, so yeah, that. th- that's what I thought it was. Like, I-, I thought Eubanks took round one and three, like, I would have definitely given it, given both of them to her. Um, she yeah, did get 10 8 in round two, though. That-, that was like kind of a beat down of a round, but and then Lad just kind of forgot she could do takedown. <laughs> <laughs> <Got outstruck. laughs> Lad just doesn't, there's just no rival reason there. It's just... Like my my thing of lad is always I feel like she's like if a, like a okay male blue belt joined the UFC bantamweight women's division. Where it's like, all right, you're physically overpowering compared to the other people, but oh, you you're not very good. Yeah, she just like, has like a good. She has like a heavy damaging top game that she can't always get there, but she um. Somehow, just like because it's the women's MMA, she just like consistently finds herself in that position <laughs> because like they both just like fall over. Cummins. What's up? Patrick Cummins is always my like comparison basketball. <laughs> She's like a worse Patrick Cummins. <laughs> you you hate Aspen Lad, man. You are ruthless to her. Um, I, it's just it's just terrible. How, how do you look at that and go, "This is something I want to get behind"? It's just. Well, okay. I think you get. I think you get behind because you look like, relatively speaking, to the division. You know. Yeah. Still, like, yeah, Banks was clearly the value side there. Oh yeah, yeah like yeah. yeah I, I'm not. I'm not saying whether or not she was value side there. I'm just saying like, Aspen Ladd probably consistently beats girls in the division because she has a heavy top game. <laughs> she That's- does, but she's like minus five hundred against everybody. It's like, why is she minus five hundred? <laughs> I agree with that. Like the lines might be steep at times. Even against Avenger, like the Avenger, she was like minus two hundred, and that was a weird fight. Yeah, I pretty much put no stock into that now after seeing Avenger's bottom game against uh, who was it, Landsberg? Yeah, and also Avenger kind of pushed her up against the cage, went for a sw- went for a trip, and fell. fell over, yep, fell over, and they got <laughs> rabbit punched like twenty times. <laughs> hey, that, that's a consistent way to get takedowns in women's MMA, though. At the back of the headshots aren't aren't illegal in the women's bantamweight apparently. Like those, those are egregious back of the headshots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That... So... But uh, yeah. Lad, yeah, Lad's best training partner is Max Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> now you bring up my rival, Max Griffin. <laughs> Look, Max Griffin is possibly the goat. Is there, maybe that is. I am getting another um, fight, or was he like fighting Forrest Griffin? Or oh, Imadev? Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if like people were around. Yeah, we have a rivalry, Gugabe and I. Or I played Imadev, like, and he played Max Griffin, and he lucked out due to recency bias in round three, and because Imadev is and an idiot, grabbed forty k. Yeah, <laughs> the point deduction. 
<laughs> it honestly looked like a close fight, to be honest. Yeah. Um, like if they kept fighting. Um, but yeah, we had a rival a rivalry there. And I still think Mac I, I I like Max Griffin, like as a guy. Um, I just don't think he's very good. Max Griffin is just as good as Aston Lad. <laughs> Oh, like skill for skill, yeah. But, but I'm talking about like but I, now I have to compare him to like men's welterweight fighters, you know, um, which Ask is like Ben Askren is a top five welterweight fighter, and he has no striking whatsoever. Well, we got to get Askren, Askren and Max Griffin. I want to see, I want to see that one, so I can take Askren because he would destroy Max Griffin in a wrestling match. Aspen Lad and Ben Askren have the exact same skill set. It's just forward, walking forward and judo throwing people at the punishing top game. That's all we've got. Uh, Askren could learn the bad cheese scream. He would be unstoppable. I'll defend Askren. Like his his takedowns. I think it's. I think people like don't like them because uh, they look sloppy. But like, like as far as like them landing at a high rate, they don't. But because he's so tenacious with them. That's why he gets the takedowns. And, and he is doing, like, technique. Like, uh, he'll trap you up against a cage and, like, get some type of trip. He's just, like, a very, like, tenacious chain wrestler. He's not... But he, he, it doesn't look pretty, you know? Um, but, like, th there's a reason he dominated people in college. It's because it's effective, even though it doesn't look good, you know? Look, we all know the NCAA is just this fancy, fancy land where nothing actually you know, matters. Um, it's just, it's terrible. Um, <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, um, Ask uh, just, he was, the, he was dominating kickboxers. Bellator kept him far, far away from anybody who could actually wrestle or grapple whatsoever. <laughs> like, imagine if Rory Mack versus Ask I feel like Rory Mack destroys him. He um... Askren could maybe do what Fitch was doing, though, of like kind of getting takedowns at times. Um, no, like I, got Fitch's pace or toughness or like striking defense. He doesn't have the striking defense. I do think I do think Askren's cardio is pretty good. Like, uh, um, as far as like, I think his pace is pretty good. Um, it might not be as better than John Fitch's, but I think it's still good. Uh, I think he's proven that. Um, Fitch That'd be a good fight. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't Maybe think Fitch can... Fitch, one thing I will say about Askren, you can't hold... The, the times he has been kind of like taken down, um, he's impossible to hold down. That's the one thing I will defend. It's just like most of the matchups, that doesn't matter because he's not going against guys trying to take him down, you know? Um, but I don't think Fitch can hold him down. I, I would like to see him versus a wrestler because that aspect of his game would come in because Askren's really hard to hold down. Um, like even him and Covington would be interesting because I don't think Covington can hold Askren down. Um, so yeah, like that, that, that's like a, a question for another day though, because Masvidal is not going to be going for takedowns here, but this is, this is all high Masvidal. He could, I, I'm in such a middle ground with Askren because I do think like, he is shortchanged by some people at times, but I do think like if you look at his record and who he's beaten and kind of just like look at the style matchups, like if you just go through his record, he hasn't beaten many good people. Like he beat Lyman good and Koreshkov kind of in their inf infancy, you know? And other than that, he really like, like Nick Thompson way past his prime. Um, a bunch of people I've never heard of. Dan Hornbuckle was like a 2008 guard player. Um, Ioki is undersized and just plays a guard game. Um, the Lawler fight was just kind of weird. So like, Jay Huron? and then Jay Huron was a close, like, like Jay Huron's pretty good and it was a close fight, you know? So it's like, I, I like, there's definitely padding in his record. Like, if you don't think there's padding in his record, I just don't think you're being objective. But at the same time, like, he has some effectiveness in his game, even if it looks weird. Uh, so I'm kind of like in a middle ground with him. Like, I think he could beat some, some good welterweights, but I also think he shouldn't be minus 250 against some really good welterweights. That's kind of where I'm at, you know? Yeah, I think he's quite sort of uh, matchup dependent on top of that. 
Exactly. Like, yeah, that's what he is. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely some matchups, even top world away, he did do very well in. Like, I give him a good shot against Covington. But there's also guys who are like lower in divisions who I wouldn't necessarily give him that shot against. Yeah. Like, even um, if it was like, even someone like a Cowboy Oliveira, I'd give it a decent shot against my, I'd give a decent shot against um, Askren just because of his stupid athleticism. Well, the thing about Askren is even against like, like, I think he would. Cowboy Alvar, but the thing is, like, he's always threatened to get KO'd in every fight. Um, no, so the way that like, Cowboy Alvar just sort of turned out of um, Gunnar Nelson's body lock was insane. Like, just holding down Oliveira is difficult <laughs> because he's just, he's just stupidly athletic. Or Nico Price would just side control bottom um, hammer fist Ashburn. <laughs> oh, God. I actually, Nico versus Askren would be hilarious because it would truly be like, I mean, it would be like the most binary fight ever. Um, but is Askren on top of side control? Is he not? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Um, Askren, Askren's chin. God, we're talking so much about Askren. I mean, it's like the hot topic, though. But Askren, he, his chin, like, like people saw the Lawler fight. And they were like impressed with his chin, but I'm the opposite. <laughs> like, I think when you kind of get landed on that clean, it, like you, you only have so many of those in you and he's really only been hit a, a few times and he hasn't responded well ever. Um, I forget who the upkick was against, but in Bellator, I think it was against Lyman Good. He almost got KO'd by an upkick. Do you remember that? Vaguely, not like specifically who did it, but I definitely do remember the sequence of events. Uh, uh, here, I'm going to pull it up and s- send it to like, you. Uh, Askren versus Luke. What's up? Askren versus Luke. Um, yeah, Luke. that was back in that. That would no, be no, pretty crazy. No, just, yeah, I, I just I'm just curious who would win that because like Luke, is, how good is Luke's jujitsu? It's like he's supposed to have this elite jujitsu, but it's like he has got credentials. Like, I've seen him like, I, I've seen his jujitsu before, and I remember thinking it was pretty good. Um, he, he goes for like a lot of darses, I think. Um, he's, he's got a good dars game, but I don't think he's necessarily got a good jujitsu. Yeah, like he, he just seems to have a very good finishing dars game, but we haven't really seen him do like a lot of long jujitsu exchanges. You get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, God, I, I want to find that fight where Askren. Yeah, I, I mean. Dude, dude, he he was out on this up kick. Like he was out cold for like two seconds and kind of came back to who God, who is that against? I just can't find it. But um Yeah. Yeah, and then, then like I don't know, I just don't think he responds that well to strikes. Um Masvidal's not like an incredibly heavy hitter, but he is accurate. And uh it's Lyman Good. Lyman Good according to Reddit. Oh, is it Lyman Good? Yeah, I pull up sure. Yeah, he got lucky because it was a very end- yeah he was out fuck. Are you watching it? Yeah, he's gone. No, he was gone. Yeah, he was, he was gone. Yeah. Like yeah, he gets triangle choked immediately afterwards. Yeah, yeah, no, he he's out cold, dude. Like like he, he doesn't even really know where he's. Yeah. As good as that lad hadn't been exhausted, he would have just yeah he could have just kept got up and kept punching. Yeah, yeah, yeah then he, he literally no control of his body. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, yeah, a lot of people don't know about that exchange, but like, like that's what I'm saying. I don't think his chin's very good, and he's only re- he's been hit by Waller, and he almost died. He got up kicked, and this wasn't even like that. I don't know. Like, I, I just feel like an up kick like that doesn't put people down like that all that often. Um, and then he he was getting tagged by that Alekishin guy later in the fight, but that guy was a little tired. Um, but he still was getting hit clean. It, it kind of looked like it was affecting him. I just don't think he responds well to strikes. But a, a lot of people yeah. don't know about this up kick. Like, I mean, he, he was pretty much like out cold for a half second. He was kind of gone, you know. That, that was the end of round. That was like twenty seconds left in round five. So if he if that kept going, he was probably yeah, he was fucked. Yeah, it, it was the it was the end of the fight. Um, and Lawler clearly had him uncon- He was clearly unconscious against Lawler. Yeah. Um, it's like a, that, that was one of those, like, I'm fine with it, letting it go. But if they would have stopped that, I don't think anyone would have disagreed at the time because it was kind of like crazy how Askren kind of ended up surviving. But he, he was he was getting hit yeah. with bombs. And I think, was he out for a second? Yeah, he definitely. Like, I'm watching the um, slow motion GIF right now. He looks gone. 
Because he was like extended on the mat, like his like just flat, you know. Oh yeah, you sent it to me. Look. Oh yeah, like his dude. He's like. He's limp. He's gone. Yeah. If that if that been stopped there, nobody would have any issues with. No, I think people would have just even assumed he was out cold, and like there was no coming back. (laughs) Um, I I, I think he generally was out. He seemed to get woken up again by the punch after that. Yeah, he, oh, he, oh, he's gone, dude. His his arm goes limp. Yeah, wow. His head goes limp, and um, his arm went limp. And um, have they didn't stop the fight? What the fuck? Oh wow! I like I yeah, like the slow motion. You can kind of just see. Like yeah, I think he got like woken up by a strike. But um, yeah, I, I think the mo- the moral of the story is like you can hit him clean, and I don't think he like he he te- he can be put out cold. Let's be real. Like he's pretty much been out cold a couple times. Um, and if you just like look at the percentage of how long, how many times he's been hit compared to how hard he gets hurt, you know, um, it's not the best ratio for him. But yeah, hey, well, go ahead, off, slide over here. Um, good podcast. Um, probably be back again next week for random me versus lad. Yeah, we all hyped. Sounds good. Yep, I'm gonna personally fly over to try and do my new anime. <laughs> That's gonna be a fun podcast that you could just complain about Aspen Lad for an hour, so it'd be good. Actually, I might actually pick Aspen Lad if she becomes like a big underdog just because of the um ground paths there. Like Eubanks is at least as an elite grappler, whilst Aspen um uh, think Anatomy is not. Aspen Lad inside the distance is the play of the of that fight. Because yeah. if she wins like like if she's not going to be winning rounds on the feet and if she's winning rounds it's because she got it to the floor and if she got it to the floor it's over uh like like jermaine duran means a white belt on the floor like she might have good takedown defense but that doesn't mean she can grapple once she's actually taken down um i'll probably just slam the unders there because i think randomly probably knocks her out if she gets time to work because lad has no striking what what will that <laughs> it that itd will be interesting like I think people are sharp enough to know like that that shouldn't be that it should the, oh, what, what do you think it'll be even money ITD I'd, I'd, I'd price like mine's 200 ish yeah yeah no no I know what we would price it but what do you think like the boys will price it minus 130 yeah I yeah, think it'll like, be something around there home, yeah. actually home news just came in quite a bit actually interesting oh yeah uh, yeah, just now plus one thirty. It seems to have come in the last two, three hours. I buy some of that. All right. Yeah. Don't want to move. Just buy some. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm All looking right. now. All right, so yeah, that makes sense to me. I, I'd, I'd price to go the distance from um, home noon to like minus odds. Yeah, I would put it at minus odds too. I just don't. I, I'm guessing the bookies will too. They'll probably have it like minus one thirty. That's what I would assume, but. All right, man. I'll uh, I'll talk to you next week, and uh, yep. yeah, we'll be able to. Oh man, that's gonna be a shit show. We'll recap an Askren fight, and you're either gonna be really happy or really upset. And then we're gonna be talking about Lad. I don't know if you'll be able to handle that that hour, but it'll be good. It'll be a lot, but no, I probably won't be too upset if Askren wins. Depends how he wins, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, all good. All right. All right see ya. Bye.